Okay, okay, here we are. Welcome everyone. It is uh, the January the 28th. We are on the JS Core Dev Team Weekly Sync. Uh, how are you all today? Hooray, big thumbs up. All right, <laughs> all right. Good, glad we're all, we're all happy. Um, cool, welcome. If you are here, please put your name on the attendees list in the notes. Uh, can we have a, we have a note taker who's volunteered himself uh, this week and it is Jacob. Thank you, Jacob. Um, then what happens next? What happens next? Okay, so now what we do is we do a weekly update where we all tell each other what we did last week, what we're blocked on, and uh, what we're planning to do this week. Uh, we're, I'm going to start from the top uh, and the first person on the list today is Jacob. Would you like to give us your update? I would love to. Uh, yeah, so last week focused mainly on finishing up the daemon work um, and then took a break from that because I was banging my head on the wall um, and fixed some old stuff for the S3 data store. Um, so there's a, an example lock that improves some of that and then um, fixed in a multiple callback issue with the AWS library because it is inconsistent. Um, I'm also now lead maintainer on JS Multi-Adder um, I think I'm watching that, but if not, uh, feel free to at mention me if you have any PRs there. Um, lots of reviewing last week. This week, we have um, a couple issues have come up around transport listening, um, improving that. So I've gone ahead and created a uh, issue in JS LibPDP that I'm going to work on finalizing this week that talks about that whole structure of adding retry logic to transports. Um, and better error messaging and state messaging on whether we're listening or we need to retry or whatever. Um, so if you are interested in that, please check out that issue in comments so we can um, get that rolling and hopefully get that updated soon. And then, yeah, finish the daemon and then I will also work on finalizing the rendezvous timeline for getting the rendezvous um, servers rolled out in the next couple of quarters. Any questions for me? Uh, yeah, uh, when you say retry listening, uh, w why would you retry? So this is for like the WebSockets when they try to listen to like the WebSocket star servers that if we have uh, the connections down or the WebSocket star is, is down, when your node goes to initially connect and listen on via those servers, right, we'll just end up like failing hard and crashing the node. And so ultimately what we want to be able to do is do like a back off retry logic so that whenever your node goes offline um, or those servers go offline that we have retry built in so we're not crashing nodes and then we can just automatically reconnect. Cool, okay, so that I guess that would cover like if you closed your laptop and then opened it somewhere else and you were offline but then came online, it would reconnect? Yep, or if you dropped off of Wi-Fi. Yeah, cool. Like being able to reconnect automatically. That sounds super useful. Cool. Okay. Uh, any other questions for Jacob? All right. If there's nothing else for Jacob, uh, the next person on the list is Volker. Happy IPLD day, Volker. <laughs> it's happy IPLD day because Volker has finished doing a whole bunch of API refactors to async away and has sent us all pull requests today. And so today, every year from now on, it will be National IPLD day. Would you like to give us your update? Yeah, so also a happy IPLD day from my side. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I worked on the uh, IPLD APIs, obviously, and finished them and set out a few PRs. And so the plan for me would be that I get a review of those PRs, and then if there's any questions or problems, I will then make changes on the actual PR on IPLD. And then once we're good, I will merge the um, IPLD um, PR, and then we go through the whole um, release dance, basically. But it's only for dependencies, I think, so it's not too bad. Um, so I hope to get this uh, finished this week. And uh, next week, or this week, I will work on the graph sync selectors stuff, finally. 
And then there's also, so this was only part of the JS IPLD part things. So the other part is the IPL, so-called IPLD formats, which is the lower level when it's about protocol buffers and CBOR and Git and so on. And those formats need, need an update. But once this other change is merged, I would then call out for help um, for moving those formats also over to a new API so everything is using async await stuff. All right, that's all. Okay, any questions for Volker? So a uh, question from me. So the IPLD, so that all the formats are currently still got their old API, but the new and the current JS IPLD module is using that old API. Is that is that right? Yes, correct. Okay, cool. Okay. And I then want to move over because it's pretty horrible because it's still the callback stuff and yeah. Okay. Got it. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you have one one or two of them uh, refactored already or? Yes, so the DAG, so I created the DAG protocol buffers because it's the most complex one. I already refactored that one with the old IPLD API. So now I need to move from the old IPLD API to the new one and yeah, which would be good. Cool, okay. And this basically will then be the template for everyone else. So if everyone wants to help out, once I've done this, I will, yeah, probably next week, give out the call for people to help out and then I can look at the, Protocol buffers one to see how, how it works. Sweet. Okay. Any other questions for Volker? No. Okay. Moving on. Uh, next person on the list is me. Um, okay. So this week I did uh, moving the private private uh, libp 2 p node uh, thing to a property called libp 2 p It's essentially exposing libp 2 p or the libp 2 p node in IPFS. Uh, other than like every other method, other than just start and stop, which the current, which, which was uh, what it was previously, um, I looked at and solved an issue with IPFS HTTP client. It wasn't being bundled in Meteor. It had a it had, to, it had a thing in its um, package JSON in the browser section to say don't bundle IPFS HTTP client. So what Meteor was doing was um, was just removing it from the bundle entirely. <laughs> so uh, that was not good. Um, so. Uh, that is fixed and released. That's good. Um, I started the migration to CID v1 base32 by default. Um, I sent a PR to JSCID. Um, it's, well, I wouldn't merge it yet because there's loads, lots more work to do. Um, and then I was looking at upgrading Happy uh, the HTTP server in JS IPFS to Happy 18. We're now, so we're currently looking at Happy 16. Um, Happy 17 was a big breaking change where they switched to async await. Um, so this is kind of in uh, kind of relevant to the uh, async await endeavor. Um, and uh, yeah, eventually we're going to have to upgrade anyway. So I thought it would be fun to, to get, get on that. Um, I fixed an issue with IPFS add. I noticed that the response for all of your files was being buffered into memory before it was being sent down to the client. So that's that was super easy to fix. So I just did it at the same time. Um, I've removed nearly 800 lines of code so far, uh, which is kind of fun. Um, uh, and yeah, uh, today I was looking at js.ipfs.io. It's, uh, it's currently using the old files API in, that is present in 0 0.33 and some of the examples are broken. So I sent a pull request to that. Um, and early, actually earlier in the week, I uh, so we got we had a new contributor, uh, which is Rad, uh, and uh, he has sent or he sent a PR which adds support for um, underscore DNS link as a subdomain for your DNS links. So instead of just having a text record on your domain, you can have a text record on your a subdomain called underscore DNS link to achieve the same same thing. So that adds adds that adds support for that. It's just a basic. Uh, and if it doesn't exist on your domain, on the domain you ask for, then check that subdomain. So yeah, that's what I was doing. I'm not blocked on anything. Um, I'm going to finish off that upgrade to Happy 18. That's, I've got like, I don't know, maybe four endpoints to do now. So um, that PR is fun times big, but <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, 
And yeah, so I'm going to continue with the CIDV1 base 32. And uh, on Friday, I'll do some Filecoin work, which will be fun. Because um, it's Filecoin Friday, nice alliteration. That's me. Does anyone have any questions? Hugo. Uh, regarding the, the upgrade for Epi, um, I think uh, Matteo mentioned that, uh, uh, in his opinion, we should move away from Epi. Uh, to something else uh, because he thinks that uh, Happy was built for speed or something like that. Uh, do you think we should think about it or just continue using it? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm so I know that uh, I, I yeah I remember him saying that. I um, Part of me feels like, yeah, eventually we might have to do that. I don't feel that our bottleneck for for things is happy yet. So, and the gap between moving to happy, the next version of happy, and the next uh, and something entirely different is way smaller than you know going to something entirely different. So, um, and it solves a whole bunch of problems like we we want to move to async away anyway, and it sort of forces our hand. Um, and yeah, I think it would take a whole, a whole lot longer to, uh, to, to migrate to something completely different. Um, if we were to do that. Um, but yeah, I am, I am open to, uh, any kind of opinions. If, if people feel that we should be moving straight to something different, then, then that's fine. Um, but let's, let's maybe talk about it after the meeting. Yeah, and uh, what do you think that uh, the PR you made or are doing uh, will be like merged with the uh, sync integrators in their things, or will you just merge it before everything else is uh, sync await? It doesn't have to be. It like it it switches to using the promises API because Happy is a sync await, and it just made more sense like that. Um, so it doesn't have to wait for that. You can just go straight in. Um, yeah. Uh, David. Yeah, I would say that on the happy thing, like uh, echo uh, Alan's comments. And I would also say that, like, again, the PFS daemon in JS just exists for the sake of testing and, and like providing like full functionality more than actually being the reason why the implementation exists. And so, um, it might be a useful thing to do in the future, but like there's uh, so many other bottlenecks that have, have been identified on the core that those should be tackled first. Um, even though if the happy transition to some other framework might sound more appealing or more uh, isolated. And, and so, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure to create an issue and I can describe what is the problem and the proposal, but like definitely do not like prioritize at all just because like there is like so, many, so much more work to do in the core itself. Cool. Any other questions? Okay. Um, let's move on then. Uh, Vashko, would you like to give us your update? Hello, everyone. Uh, so last week I worked in the in continuing the DH integration in GSAPFS. Now, basically, the current state uh, I have the CI green right now. Uh, I've uh, I've been trying to run it uh, several times. It is not uh, uh, really stable yet. It fails like uh, each uh, uh, three four times. It fails at least one. Uh, but uh, I think it's on the good way. Uh, besides that, I I fixed uh, IP IPv6 connection that uh, was failing using WebSockets. That was a problem that reached in CI with the uh, DHT. And I'm now working also in the in the adding the connection manager limits, which I think will also help in uh, the CI uh, not being that stable in the DHT. But uh, uh, I would like uh, uh, Alan, if you have time this week, to have a review for the DHT PR while I finish the connection manager stuff to see if we can uh, uh, finish it this week. Uh, other things than the DHT, I created a PubSub based protocol uh, module because uh, now we'll be uh, collaborating with uh, Mike Hira from Change Safe Systems. We had 
Amirin last week, the LPTP team, and they will be helping us with uh, Gossip Sub in JSLand. And so I created this uh, base protocol that was extracted from the Flood Sub in order to allow them to start implementing the Gossip Sub with the same base as we are using in the Flood Sub right now. Uh, and finally, I also created uh, the first benchmark uh, for uh, PubSub, which is a simple simple test for benchmarking a message being uh, subscribed and published afterwards. And so for this week, I will I want I would like to finish the DHT. So uh, hopefully, I would fix the review that Alan will do for for it. Then I also want to review the Jacob's work for the Olympic uh, uh Then uh, get also the demon client merged and uh, continue the interop work for Olympic that I've started uh, last month, but I hadn't uh, had time to continue it. Uh, so any questions or comments from me? Nope. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let's move on to the next person on the list, uh, which is uh, Chris Cool. Are you here? Hi, yeah. Yeah, you are. Okay, so I'm working part time, and uh, my work right now is about uh, creating a dashboard so that we can see uh, which uh, uh, commands, which IPFS commands, and uh, HTTP APIs are implemented by uh, each uh, IPFS uh, implementations. So I started to do that um, using the coverage script that I had written uh, really a long time ago. And, uh, and so I have a prototype uh, that, that kind of work, but that outputs only in text and, uh, and so I, I need to make it out with some markdown to, to show something nice and, uh, and I also need to, to merge my scripts together uh, yeah, to be better. That's pretty much it. Any question? I'd love to see a demo of that at some point soon. Okay, yeah, we can uh, maybe at the first demo. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Any other questions for Christy? Okay, let's move on quickly because we're running out of time already. Uh, Hugo. So uh, last week I was sick at the end of the week and the rest of it, I fixed some stuff about the bootstraps uh, not connecting, uh, release a new version of the um, ISO URL package. I also had added support for cores on the preload mock server, so we don't have to disable security on Firefox and Chrome or whatever when you're running tests in the browser. Um, debugged some error about uh, the URLs not being cor correctly um, parsed or outputted. Um, this was related to IPv6 uh, IPs not using brackets and then the, the URL package uh, throwing an error. I think that should be fixed already. I, I don't, I don't, I, not actually sure, but Vasco will probably know more about it. Uh, and also added the support for coverage in Karma. This is related to the CI prototypes. Uh, I'm still blocked on the Amplex package. Uh, if Jacob finds some time this week to help me out with this, I'm trying to make the pull stream to stream package out. Uh, kind of output uh, readable stream three, but there is so much uh, overriding and overloading, uh, overloading in there that uh, stuff keeps breaking and tests keep, keep breaking. Even the tests on the pull stream to stream are really strange because they, they assume like the, the really old way of streams working in Node 
uh, that's like three iterations on top of it. Uh, so it's kind of weird to make everything work. Uh, uh, so I'm kind of kind of blocked on, on that. And uh, this week I'll be having a day off tomorrow, and then uh, we will have all the uh, Fosdem conference. I'll try to fix uh, to finish the pull streams to streams, and also an issue with the proper log file. Um, I think it was Alan that reported it. Um, as we now kind of check the staleness of the log file, if you if you like uh, close your laptop or make it sleep for a while, and then you open it open up uh, again, the the demon will probably <laughs> throw with uh, an error saying that he couldn't update the, st uh, the stale check or the stale timer, and then just breaks the, the demon. I'll try to fix that um, this week. Uh, that's it. Anyone has any questions? Cool. Okay, let's move ourselves on. Uh, Matteo doesn't look like he's here, uh, so we'll leave that. Uh, for everyone to read on their own. Uh, and next up is Alex. Would you like to give us your update? Hello. Um, so I've been working on <coughs> uh, on trying to integrate IPFS with NPM. So there's a client, uh, yeah, so there's a, there's a package called a Good Day in which talks to something called NPM registry client which is the interface to the IPFS registry. So I've been implementing a module that implements the same API as that, but talks to IPFS instead. Um, it's not done yet uh, because, you know, it's a pretty leaky abstraction. So there's HTTP stuff all over the place, which is super tedious. Um, but yeah, hopefully I should be able to get that done uh, at the beginning of next week. Um, I've been looking at all of Volker's IPLD API changes uh, it's really cool. I uh, really want to get all that merged. It would be great. Um, so when, yeah, when the main JS IPLD change goes in and the new version is released, then we can merge all the Unix of S stuff. Um, and when that's done, I'm going to start converting them all to be async and iterators and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, that's going to be me. Uh, I'm going to be at Fosdem next week. So I hope to see some of you there. Any questions? Okay. Uh, oh God, I've lost the pad. Right. Moving on. Uh, Zane, are you here? Zane is not. Yeah. Oh yes, he is yeah. here. Yes. Sorry. Sure. No worries. So just jamming on JS IPFS repo changes. Um, pretty close to being able to file PR. Just mirroring whatever happened in the data store interface. So thanks for unblocking me there. And that's it. Cool. Um, Cool. Any questions? Nope. Uh, sweet. Uh, uh, Alex, the other Alex from Neoform is also not here. Uh, but then we have Ron. Would you like to give us your update? Yeah, so added more tests. Um, added the JS to Go test. Um, also the Go to JS peer test. So back and forth, those two worked. Also added some more description on that issue that was reported as far as um, I think it was js to go was very slow. It was much slower than the other ones, and that showed up also in the benchmark. So um, Mateo has enough information on that with the um, with the clinic um, output is all in the issue. So I think he's going to be looking at that more this week too. Um, so yeah, so added those tests. Added the TC, you know using TCP or WebSocket connection on those tests. Um, so the web matrix we're just in, been adding more to the web matrix. The matrix, the test matrix, um, just filling in some of those things. Um, also on the transport, so I had some questions on the tra transport. Alan did answer those questions, so thank you so much. A lot of detail on that, so I was just looking over that last week. I'm going to need to make some changes on our runner. That was also kind of brought in when the pub sub tests were shown in place. So, we're gonna, so instead of passing in just the options, we're going to pass in all the options that are possible to create the IPFS at each run so you can customize it to make it behave how you need it to and I'll need that also for the different transports. 
Um, yeah, so then hopefully I'll get to the well this week MFS test. We haven't added one yet, so I wanted to make sure that we're able to do that and it shows up correctly. Um, and then other than that, it just um, Alex is going to be working on some more things, some more changes on the back end. It's it's trying to get it a little bit more stable, um, and I'll be doing more testing too on that too. Um, and then just adding more tests as filling in that test matrix. So that's it for me. Cool. Thank you, Ron. Any questions for Ron? All right. Let's keep going. Keep this train rolling. Uh, it's Lytle next. Lytle, you're here. Hi. Hi. Uh, like just a very quick, uh, quick update rele relevant to JS IPFS. Uh, we were able to whitelist IPFS companion extension ID in an experimental branch uh, in Brave, and that way we have the stable ID. Uh, that across multiple uh, machines. So having that, uh, I was able to access Chrome sockets APIs from, I, from IPFS uh, companions background page. It's the same page that embedded JS IPFS runs right now, if you switch to embedded node. And I was able to start HTTP server from that context. So that's sort of a huge, Thing because that unblocks the entire plan for having JS IPFS as a provider for HTTP API when you just install extension and you have HTTP API in Brave. Uh, so the next step will be to check if any of uh, HTTP, uh, like the node HTTP polyfills for that library uh, works with the modern uh, JS IPFS because I've seen that it <laughs> there are polyfills that were created like three or four years ago and uh, like new APIs happened uh, and JS APFS does not support anything older than node seven. So we may have some uh, polyphils uh, to missing, but uh, it's very promising so far. And that's all. Very cool. Oh, and uh, in next week, of course. <laughs> yeah, so the plan is to just check what's missing and I'll be at FOSDEM. So I hope to see uh, a lot of you there. Cool. Okay. Any questions for Lytle? Okay, cool. In which case we are on time, completely on time. Does anyone have any super quick things to say before we leave? All right. In which case, uh, big hearts. Yes. Or always welcome. Always welcome. Um, Rad. Uh, very cool. Thank you for thank you for joining us for uh, this exciting edition of uh, what we did last week. What we are going to do this week. Or what? What did I say? Woo! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Hooray! Until next time. Bye. 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 Bye.